links in Roam are very easy to work with. Uh, you can either type them in just as a, a URL and Roam will automatically recognize it. Um, I'll just give you an example here. If I were to say type um, the Roam research homepage here, um, it will automatically recognize that as a link to the homepage. You can see when I hover over it down there in the left-hand corner, you can see it points to the correct location. Uh, so that's, I mean, the simplest and most obvious way to enter a URL in Rome is just the URL. It will recognize it automatically. If you want to create a text link where the text says one thing, but it, it points to a specific URL, uh, you can do that with the format single brackets around the text and parentheses around the URL. So if I were to just type that, you know, uh, out by hand, Rome Research, and then I could type the link here. And now I have a text link that now I have a little styling on this. That little arrow doesn't come automatically. But that's a little style that I have in my graph, but it will underline. It will show up blue. And as you can see down in the lower left-hand corner points and actually comes up <laughs> right there with it. Um, it shows you what the actual link points to. You can do that automatically by pressing control K. So if I typed control K, I would get my single bracket and my parenthesis, and I can type room research and I can type the, the link here. And I have that. I can also, if I wanted to take an existing, um, you know, if I had Rome research already typed and I wanted to take that and turn that into a link, if I highlight that and I hit control K, it will automatically wrap that in the single brackets and then it'll be sitting there waiting for me to enter uh, the URL uh, for that. So you can do it that way. Um, it's very quick and easy. So if you already have some text that you want to link, you can do that. And you can see they all point exactly the same way because they all have the same format, single bracket for the text and single parenthesis for the link right afterward, which is a standard uh, link format. So that's nothing unusual. And worth, worth noting, links to external URLs will open automatically in a new browser tab. So if I were to click this, I'm not going to just for the sake of the demonstration here, but that would take me to a new browser tab um, and the Rome Research homepage. So that's how that works. Aliases in Rome are links. So this is important to understand. They're exactly the same format because they're exactly the same thing. An alias takes the form of the text you want to show up is the text of the link in the single brackets. And the place you want, to, want it to go, um, the destination is in the parentheses. The difference is instead of having a URL in the parentheses, you would have a page or a block reference. So you can create a page that point or an alias that points to a page. So I could say maybe um, I have my page, you know, inbox and I want it to stay instead uh, dude for some unknown reason. Um, I can put inbox here and I can put dude there. And now I have a thing that says dude. But as you can see, it actually points to my inbox page when I do that. So it would go to inbox instead if I were to open that. Open that in the sidebar and you can see there's my inbox page, which looks a little chaotic because I have a few different, because I'm busy teaching you all these things. I have a few different experiments that I run in my main graph. Um, but uh, there's that would point to my inbox page. If I wanted to point to a specific block reference, let's say I wanted a, an alias to point me back to this one that says they use the same structure. I'll copy that block reference and I can build an alias, which again is just a link. So I, all I have to do is hit control K and I can say alias to block. And then in the parentheses, I'll copy the block reference. And do notice, since it's a block reference, it has two parentheses around it, but it needs a third set of parentheses to function as the alias, as the, as the destination for the alias. I click out of that. It's an alias to a block. I have inline references turned on in settings, so it automatically gets its little number added to it there. Um, and then you have, it actually will show you when you hover over it, the the text of that block that it points back to if i were to click on it it would take me to that block so now i'm actually in that block focused on that block so that's how aliases work they are a type of link but instead of using a url uh, in the destination within the parentheses you use a page or a block reference which will take you to that block or that page 
as you'd expect. Aliases are useful co for connecting related but textually different concepts to the same page. For instance, if I had a dog and I wanted to use perro um, for dog in, in Spanish for some reason, and I wanted to use perro as, uh, as my um, single parentheses there, that would be easy for me to do. Um, I could just put that in the single bracket and a dog in the double brackets in parentheses, and that'll point to the dog page, um, but the second will display um, instead as the word. And I'll point that out here by taking off the code block. You can see it will display the word, but it'll point to that page. Okay. Um, and then also aliases can be useful for uh, rephrasing grammar. If you're writing in complete sentences or in paragraph form, if a note title would sound strange in context, for instance, you could use an alias to point to the note while having different text. Um, I, uh, let's see if I can think of an example off the top of my head here. Say I wanted to refer to uh, something in the singular that is in my graph in the plural. Um, let's say I had a page called... Um, mice for some reason i don't know and let's say that i saw i saw a mouse today but the, i wanted to point to the page mice um so i say you know i saw a mice today which doesn't really work this is a terrible example by the way because i wouldn't do this in the singular but you get the idea um or i wouldn't do it in the plural if i had a page probably should have showed the example the other way around that's okay i could then instead say i saw a mouse point it to the mice page and now I have, I saw a mouse today, as it makes sense in the sentence, but it actually points to the page mice, so it's still going to be gathered correctly by the same set of linked references. Um, now, I'm going to tell you, I don't think that that is a, a, a particularly valuable tool in the long run, because it requires you to remember every single page that, you, <laughs> that you're using for those things. And that's, uh, that's asking a lot of you uh, when we want Rome to be doing more of that heavy lifting. However... There are certainly some cases where you could have a convention that say, I always list pages in the singular so that I can, you know, that, that way, if I ever need to list them in the plural or ever need to <laughs> conjugate a verb or something of a, of a, depending on what the page is, um, I know that I'm always going to use the base form of that. Um, that way I know that's going to be the only version of the page using aliases in that context could actually work quite well. So it's, if you have a lot of different scattered ways of doing things, it won't work very well. Um, but if you have a, a sort of consistent uh, best practices for your own graph, um, aliases can be quite useful in this way. So this is, uh, aliases and links are really the same thing. Links point to outward, outward things, URLs outside the app. Um, aliases point to things within the app, page references or block references. They're both of the format, single bracket, text, um, and then within the, uh, the parenthesis, the single parenthesis, uh, the destination. So it would be the URL or the thing within Rome that you're pointing to. That's it. That's all that the links and aliases are. They're very useful. I'll tell you, I use links kind of regularly in my task management flow. Um, for when I'm processing inboxes, because not everything that I do, uh, uh, I, I do in Rome. Like, you know, if I'm capturing an idea when I'm out walking around or something, I'll often do that on my in my Todoist inbox. I used to be a, a full-time Todoist user. Now I still use the inbox for capturing short tasks and things like that. I simply have in my inbox processing flow within Rome a link to Todoist's web app. So I can just click the link. It opens on my other browser screen, and I can then very easily work with, well, you know, anything that needs to come into Rome can come into Rome at that point. Uh, it's really very simple, and it's all facilitated by a simple link. Um, a simple use um, that doesn't seem necessarily all that critical, but actually quite useful. Um, and of course, aliases uh, could have uses as I described already. So this is how they're formatted. Um, and they're a pretty simple way uh, to gather information in Rome, point, things, would point to things within Rome, and point to things that are outside Rome as well. If this video helped you, click subscribe. And check out my Rome courses as well. I have the Roman Way, which is a free course to help you learn the fundamentals of Rome research. I have AP Productivity, which is my flagship Rome course. It is an eight-week live cohort course to help you get important work done in Rome research. I have powerful task management in Rome research, which helps you build a GTD style setup for task management in Rome. And I have your road to Rome, which I'm actually updating in November or December of 2021. 
Uh, and it is a deeper dive than the free course The Roman Way. Uh, it has live master classes, Q&A sessions, additional instruction about Rome extensions, especially smart blocks, and Rome 42, which you can get from RomeJS.com. And there's a community forum for discussion of new Rome features or help with your workflows. Rome Research is an amazing tool, and I want to help you make the most of it in your life and work.